Like me anything. Oh, wow.
And the third is the Maaseh Merkava. Now the Maaseh Merkava is the, the, the beautiful prophecy of Yechezkel in the first period of Yechezkel that describes Hashem's glory in all its, all its intricate details and it's very difficult for us to understand. We don't really know what's, what's, what's going on in that period. Um, but the Gemara says that we can't, we can't learn that period of stuff by itself. We have to have the right understanding and the right people. Now at first glance it's very easy to separate between Maaseh Merkava and Maaseh Bereshit on the one side and the prohibited relations on the other side because when we're talking about prohibited relations we're simply worried about practical mistakes and therefore we need more than three people to learn it so if you're learning it for more than one person then you can um, you can correct any mistakes that would happen however Maaseh Bereshit and Maaseh Merkava is what is going to do with mistakes I find it simply there seems to be a, a, an inherent problem with learning about these things. And the question is why? Why is that true? Why is Maaseh Merkava and Maaseh Bereshit so intrinsically problematic? Um, and the Rambam in Moran Nebuchim, he discusses the issue and he basically says that it's very, we're dealing with very complex philosophical, metaphysical concepts and it's not for a normal person to delve into, which means you need you need only someone who's chacham or maybe midato, only someone who's really knowledgeable and understanding, only they can, can really delve into the ideas of, of uh, however, so that's the Rambam. The Rambam says learning master Merkava is, there's another Gemara in Masechet uh, Moed Khatan. I'll read it in English. Um, Once again, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi decreed that the Torah students should not study in the marketplace. What verse did he expound? What passage does he learn it from? The passage says in Shira Shirim, That your thighs are like jewels. The rounded thighs are like jewels. And the Gemara understands that to mean that it's talking about Torah. Torah is that which is concealed. Torah is a, is a gem. It's something concealed. And it's not appropriate to discuss Torah matters in public. It just, it's just inappropriate. It's not modest. It's not sanua. And exposing the thigh to strangers isn't a problem that's going to lead to mistakes. Like the Rambam said, but it's it's something that's not sanua, it's not decent, and it's not modest. And Chazal used that beautiful analogy to represent our relationship with the Kadosh Baruch Hu when it comes to Torah. Me and Hashem learning Torah together is an intimate relationship. It's something just for me and Him, and it's not to be shared, not to be shared in the public. So again, we have these two understandings. The Rambam says Maaseh Merkava is about understanding, and the Gemara in White Cotton seems to understand that Maaseh Merkava the problem is modesty. Let's call it intimacy. Now, um, okay, I'll skip to this part. It should be noted, therefore, that Maseh Merkava is the Mishchag and Shavuot. And bearing in mind the halachic concerns of the Mishnah, the Mishnah said you're not allowed to talk about Maseh Merkava in public. So then, well, like, then what are we doing reading the Haftorah of Maseh Merkava in public, in front of everyone, on Shavuot? It doesn't make any sense. And the one answer would be, if we go according to the Rambam, the Rambam says that the problem is understanding, then reading the Haftarah in public on, uh, on a Shavuot isn't really getting into the kishkas of superficial glance, superficial reading of, of the, of the Haftarah. But if we go like the Gemara, then the, the problem is even more, even more enhanced. If, if Maaseh recovers this personal connection between me and Hashem, how can I talk about it on Shavuot? And the answer, very simply, is, the, is, is that very fact. That Matan Torah represents this intense relationship between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and between the Jewish people. And therefore it's more than appropriate, far more than appropriate, that Maaseh Merkava is read on Shavuot to signify that relationship between the Jewish people and between Hashem. And we wish to tap into that deep relationship that was forged between God and His people at Har Sinai we wish to experience his Torah in the most vivid way possible. And by reading the elusive prophecy of Yechezkel, we show that God and his people are merely spouses sharing in the most meaningful of experiences. And there's a great responsibility in that. Um, to understand this relationship between us and between HaKadosh Baruch Hu as a, as a husband and wife. And today, today is a special day for me and Rachel. It's our own personal simcha. 
and it's our own very it's our very own matan Torah, complete with all the kedusha and tahara and the responsibility that it deserves. And it's a day in which we celebrate our coming together as a couple and sharing that most profound experience. But at the same time, there's also a public celebration. And if I just look around at all the incredible people that are standing here that came from South Africa and, yeah. and London and America and Canada and the whole world, to see, to see everyone come together and, and join in our Simcha, it's, it's, it's something truly, truly special. Our joy is your joy. And our happiness is Am Yisrael's happiness. And uh, I'm going to make the Siyom on Chagiga and the Masechet of festivity. But in truth, the Simcha is only, it's only really about a beginning. And I invite you all to, to just sing and dance with me and Rachel later this evening. And it's going to be, it's going to be a wonderful experience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, right, so the end of Chagiga, the last parish talks about all these different hill mm. halachas of Kedusha, etc. Quite complicated. And... The, the final line, the final few lines is as follows. Amarish Lakish, ain't or shall Gehenim shall be posha Yisrael. That the fire of Gehenim won't affect even the sinners of Israel. Even the sinners of Israel will be, will be free. How do we know this? Kal v'chomim mizbech ha-zahav. Ma mizbech ha-zahav, she'ein alav, ela k'ovei dinar zahav. The mizbech is burned by fire constantly, but it has a little sliver of gold surrounding it. Nevertheless, it doesn't get burnt. So, so too, um, right, Posha Yisrael Shemal in Mitzvot Karimon, Dichtiv, Kafela Karimon Rakatech, Atikar Katech, Ela Rekanim. Even the sinners of Israel who are empty, they don't even, they like, they don't have mitzvahs, Allah um, Kavam Kama, meaning, even though they don't have a lot of mitzvahs, they have some mitzvahs, that's enough to protect them from uh, from the fires of Gehenna, which is a nice positive message. Hadron Allah, Chome Bakodesh, Slikale, Nasekh Fadim.
Gali. It's a nice guy.
Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Zucker. I'm Rachel's brother. Um, I'd like to call upon Rav Penny Cullen, Ram at Yeshiva, Ram at Zion, and personal rabbi in Yishai to be the Messiah. <laughs> About a week ago, I was teaching Shmona uh, Esrei to great trees in the elementary school in Gush Etzion. And we spoke about Gariot. We said that one day we've been doubling for a long time, and one day families are going to come from all around the world to back to Eretz Yisrael. And then when the kids did some type of uh, work on it, we played in the background, Kobra Manishma, Nibachit Amumim. Rachel mebakar baniya. At Rachel, when the Galut happened, the exile, all the Am Yisrael went out to, to the exile. So Rachel was crying, crying and crying until the only thing that comforted her, Hashem said to her that one day, because of all the kindness and the chesed, it will be blessed that Bashar Banim Nigvila. That was sure number one. And sure number two, the next day we progressed to Etzemach David. We spoke about the Mashiach coming. And we said that the Mashiach is David ben Yishai. And that the Mashiach is like a tzemach, it's a plant, it's a slow process. And it's been happening now for 2,000 years. But please call it will be a tzemach, the big layout will come very speedily. So I said to them at the end of the shir, and over there we played also an imam. And then I said to them, I want to tell you a secret that next week I'm doing a wedding in Eretz Israel for a family from Johannesburg in South Africa. And the boy's name is Yishai. And I said, we, he's marrying a girl whose name is Rachel, Rachel. And they're going to be living in Eretz Yisrael. So I said, what does all of this mean? What, is it, what do you guys think? So one boy put up his hand and he said, well, there's probably going to be lots of people at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> then there was a, a few other answers. Then there was a boy at the back of the class on the right hand side, and alone. And he said, it probably means Shamashiach Baderech. Probably means Mashiach's on his way. And um, I definitely did agree. And I wanted to add on what I didn't say in class, that how much more says the Mashiach on his way if you've got a couple um, who's committed to Torah and to Mitzvot and to Chesed and to and caring about Am So please God, we can only know that through this wedding of uh, Rachel and Yishai, of Yishai and Rachel, coming all the way from the world in Kibbutz Kaliyot. In Eretz Yisrael, the peace of today will be Zohre, for the Mashiach Tzedek, the Mary of Amen. Amen.
time, we'd like to call upon Nathan Seidman and Arie Berman, close friends of Yishai, as the Ada Kedushin, and David Herbert to bring the ring. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, what do we think? So, um, I had an incredibly humbling experience this week. Um, when I first came into Livingston, I was going to bring my co-op of making Torah come alive and create exhibits that people would see Torah happen. And I thought, you know, no one is going to have thoughts like this until, you know, I'm going to show up, I'm going to do something new. And this week, I had the experience to look back at some of the home videos I had the pleasure of converting for the Fierstein family. Um, and what I found was a video of Shandy, ripped from Shandy Fierstein's at some, um, who described the exact Mako display that I set up, but she did it like a hundred times better. And one of the things she did that was like amazing to me was she said, not only should you make a mock-up display, but then set it up so the kids see themselves as coming out of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. A famous teaching we all know. And the teaching she shared was that we all have to see ourselves as part of history. And I want to share with the two of you the guidance, the advice, the awareness that as you're standing here today, I want you to look out and see every single one of the people sitting here. And I want you to think about the people standing behind you and the people who are watching online from all over the world and know that you guys are not just alone in this. Anything you need at any point moving forward, any challenge, any struggle, even something as difficult as coming out of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, you're part of a whole history here. You're part of a whole community, of a whole story. And that spans literally the entire globe. You have the support of a mother who's gonna bring you fresh baked cookies which uh, my wife is still talking about. You have the support of a family who's going to even cli climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and, and they're going to show you the way. The other teaching she shared, and this is less advice and more a shevach to the two of you, and an awareness that we can gain from the two of you is, she said also, not only should you see yourself as part of history, but you also have to be honest to be aware and be, be clear with who and what you are. That it's not just Torah that we learn, but it's Torah that we are. And this is something that the two of you embody more than anything else I've learned from the two of you. Rachel, sitting in my Jewish history class, when I first introduced the concept of Nitzotzot, we were beginning in Chassidut, and I introduced the concept of Nitzotzot, which are the holy sparks, the holy sparks that exist in everything, and that our job is to bring out those holy sparks. And some students were like, what are you talking about? There's holy sparks in my sandwich and an apple. And Rachel said, yeah, of course. Everything has inherent kedusha. Everything has an internal spirituality. The two of you are a guide, are a representation, are, are a, a spotlight of what we're looking to from the future generation. And the two of you setting out on your own and not just learning Torah, but living Torah and letting that guide you in your choices of every day of your life. That you're not just going to learn about Eretz Yisrael, but you're going to come and live Eretz Yisrael every single day. The, uh, the, Baal, the Baal Shem Tov's grandson, Nachman Breslov, has, has a famous thing, saying that he says, anywhere I go, I'm going to Eretz Yisrael. Whatever it is, that's where I'm going. And the fact that you two are standing here today means anything, anything that came from the past, anything that you've learned, anything that you've studied, you've internalized it and it's brought you here today. And I want to encourage the two of you to take that and run with it and continue to be the example for the rest of us because it's just been unbelievable to watch the two of you so far. I know Rachel a little bit more than you shot, but I'm learning slowly, I'm getting to know. Um, and it's really been incredible to watch the two of you and, and Mazal Tov and Yeshikoch and keep going. Here we have Yishai donning his new talit, and 
and he'll bring Rachel underneath as he welcomes her into his new home. The couple will say Shehechni on him, Rachel on her new ring, and Yishai on his talit, whilst bearing in mind the new home they are about to build together. Amen! I'm 
Abiel Abrams, brother of the groom, to read the sixth book. Jesse Zucker, brother of the bride, to read the Today, at the height of their joy, 
Yishai and Rachel remember that the Beit HaMikdash has yet to be rebuilt, and therefore they will break a glass to commemorate its destruction. An author of the Kalpo notes that the broken glass represents the wreckage of our past glory. It recalls that at the most joyous and momentous occasion of the life cycle, that there is a continuing national sadness. It connects the private celebration here at the Chabah to the national tragedy of our loss of the temple. Still, it enriches the quality of joy as the couple takes it upon themselves to build their own personal Beit HaMikdash every day for the rest of their lives. Oh, we're not.